Hey everyone, it's Zach with Palantir Research. Artificial intelligence is the hot topic nowadays and is expected to be a trillion dollar market in the near future, near as in a decade. Palantir is poised to win a chunk of this business, hopefully in the tens of billions of dollars on the commercial and government side. So I wanted to see if it's possible to forecast the potential amount of revenue that Palantir can get in a worst and best case scenario and my thoughts on the feasibility of these numbers actually being achieved. This is your warning. These calculations are basic and not investment advice, but merely an exercise to see different scenarios of decline and growth. So let's start with the sources used to set up our assumptions and get them as realistic as possible. First from the IDCs or International Data Corporation Study of Worldwide Artificial Intelligence. This came out back in September of 2022. They state that the market has grown from 36.8% in 2021, making it a $14.2 billion industry where early adopters were reporting 35% improvement in innovation and 33% improvement in sustainability over the past three years. And just keep in mind, this is specifically to artificial intelligence platforms, software market shares. When looking at the top five companies by sales, Palantir is at the top at 1.392 billion, where Microsoft is close with 1.252 billion. And the rest of the main competitors aren't a surprise, honestly, with IBM, Amazon AWS, and Google coming in with hundreds of millions of dollars as well. Then for the overall AI market, it is expected to grow from 138.4 billion in 2022 to 1.1 trillion dollars by 2032 that's a compound annual growth rate of almost 22.97 percent per year so we know palantir is a leader in the market today with a certain percentage of market share in regards to ai platforms and we also do know the overall ai market which is growing at a huge rate 23 percent kager is ginormous as you can see building itself up to that one trillion dollar market ready for the taking by many companies to do a rudimentary model we have have the basics like a starting revenue numbers, relative market share compared to other top competitors, growth of the overall market, and some actuals and guidance from Palantir themselves. Let's go over the assumptions first. So mapping those top five competitors, we have Palantir grabbing about 1.24% of the total AI market for 2021. I utilized the 22.97% Kager, just went backwards from 2022's value to find the estimated 2021 TAM of about $112.5 billion. Now I put together three models based on their market share. First two are declining markets of negative 5% and negative 10% per year. Next will be stagnation and low growth of 3% a year. Then lastly are optimistic models at 10% and 15% growth in their market share percentage per year. Lastly, we want to see how feasible these are, so I utilized the full year revenue of 2021 and 2022, since those are actuals plus the bottom end of guidance for fiscal year 2023. And I wanted to throw in a future marker, which I know hasn't been mentioned at all in any recent earnings, but we were given a $4 billion revenue goal by 2025. So I'll take any marker we can get, even if it is aggressive. So after 2025, I don't think it makes much sense to project as that would basically be guessing the Kager. So I just want to keep the actuals for the upfront years and see how much we deviate early on until we hit the trillion dollar TAM. Starting with the bad news, if they decline in market share growth, where basically this is bad for Palantir having the AI pie getting bigger, but they're unable to maintain their market share percentage and lose out to competitors, you'll see they grow revenue minusculely with the 5% decline per year, leading to only $7.7 .7 billion, which would be horrible if that's 10 years from now. Even worse, if we lose 10% in market share per year, only obtaining a 0.39% of the market in 2032, this falls to only $4.2 billion that year. If this is actually what comes to fruition, we probably would see such a small growth rate in their revenue that shareholders like us would already notice this trend early on rather than waiting until 2032 to see this. So the feasibility though of these conservative estimates looks possible considering the actuals and guided numbers are greening, meaning the projected AI revenue is below, but that's to be expected. Now on to the stagnant, which means no growth and low growth models. Stagnant assumes they keep their 1.24% market share throughout this growing AI pie, and we see this would have 13.5 billion in AI revenue by 2032. However, if they can grow their market share by maybe 3% each year, this can grow to 1.72% of the market share by that time and obtaining $18.7 billion. This really shows small strides can add up each year, even if bumpy. 
there may be good years and bad years, but if this CAGR is at 3%, you still can see tremendous growth nominally. The feasibility of these base cases looks possible for the most part, but the 3% growth early on for 2023 does fall below that $2.18 billion low end guidance. However, the high end guidance is $2.230 billion, which is only off around $8 million. So if guidance is met on the high end or exceeded, then this 3% rate looks feasible at least in the early years. Now, in an amazingly perfect world where we hope Palantir can gobble up market share and destroy the competition while the pie is growing, with 10% growth in market share per year, they can end up with 3.54% of the market, bringing $38.7 billion in 2032 from AI. And if they can supercharge this to 15% per year, they can grab 5.77% of the total market and end up with almost double at $63 billion. However, the feasibility of this looks very unlikely, although their actual revenue for 2022 did meet that 10% growth rate. But once 2023 hit, the AI revenue is much higher than even the high end of guidance, unless you consider them sandbagging this, but I'd rather assume the worst case scenario. So we've seen all these different scenarios, so what are my thoughts? Obviously, I really want them to grab these optimistic growth models, but with such a large time frame, you may not even be able to see this growth early within the next few years if they were to scale on an S-curve. Meaning, if they had exponential growth, we would only see large growth rates in the later years, which would not be seen here in a linear market share growth model, where it grows the same each year. Year. So in reality, I actually lean towards those conservative and low growth numbers. We know that all the big competitors in the assumptions are all prioritizing artificial intelligence. Obviously, Palantir is doing the same as we've heard them come out publicly, talk about artificial intelligence much more in the recent news than before. So leaning close to that 3% growth in the market share where Palantir is a winner in a sense by growing, but not necessarily the dominant player. I'm more comfortable in this assumption with such a long time frame, and we never know how smaller competitors today might catch up even to the big tech companies, let alone Palantir. We'll just have to see how this plays out and hopefully we are pleasantly surprised on the positive side. If you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe to Palantir Research for more content like this and I'll see you in the next video.